Wrong title, I think, for this bit. Um, oh, no, actually, well, I'm just going to reinterpret it a bit. I think it's, this is about society's need for mass education to change. So I'm going to change the order of the concepts and therefore change what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Um, sorry about that. No, that's good. Um, many, many things I could talk about. I'm just going to briefly mention some of the stuff I've done in the past. Um, you know, I came across a brilliant access course to Sussex, which was taught entirely through the history of mathematics. And it's incentivized adults who'd had a terrible experience in terms of their schooling, they emerged with virtually no maths attainment, to become uh, sufficiently um, competent in mathematics to access undergraduate education. Very, very important. I've personally worked, done empirical work with health professionals who are killing people by virtue of their, their behavior in, in drug administration because of a failure of breakdown of maths understanding. And I worked for years on, on trying to develop a proper version of core skills or functional skills. Um, not, not functional skills that were, sorry. Worked for years trying to develop an appropriate model of core skills and functional skills. Not as a weak reflection of the, the, the kind of mass attainment which is developed in schools, but what adults, again, who've had a terrible experience of, of mathematics education and schooling need when they've been in the labor market for 20 years and their maths attainment is actually preventing them from performing well in benefit to themselves, society, and the economy. So that's the kind of background which I bring to the, the National Curriculum Review. And what is the hell is a national curriculum supposed to do in relationship to mathematics? I mean, it, it's not trivial that there's a massive debate going on in certain areas in the Asian uh, states around whether the abacus should be retained um, because it develops deeper mathematical understanding. And this is very important in terms of, of, of the assertions that we've heard this morning. Um, I'm not advocating the retention or indeed the introduction of the abacus. I'm raising this really challenging problem of the distinction between surface behavior and deep understanding. So in curriculum theory and in empirical work in, in curriculum research, we, we've got a lot of evidence about what things you need to do and how much of it you need to do and what time you need to devote to it in the curriculum in order to get a proportion to deep mathematical understanding. And, and, and Martin Hyland's actually very clear on this. You know, he, at Cambridge, he said, look, I know exactly what I need at Cambridge, but I had no idea what you do in schools to create it. And yet a national curriculum actually has to provide some kind of route map, some kind of epistemic map to generate deep understanding, but specify it at the level of surface behaviors. It's incredibly challenging. And therefore, it, it provides some form of restriction, restriction determined by the state. The state will say, through law, that a child needs to achieve this by a particular age. Now, what do we do? Do we, we specify it year on year and actually list the concepts which a child should acquire, the understanding they should develop at a particular age, or at the end of a particular stage, leaving more discretion to schools as to what they ought to do to get people to that particular understanding. And that's where the problems really start. Because if you get it wrong, if you put the right thing but uh, at the wrong age, you can diminish the ex societal expectation by putting it too late. <coughs> if you put it too early, you can stress the system too far. And, and what is the system that we have in this country? Well, largely, mass education is composed of the actions of mass educators. And we know we have desperately inadequate educators in many of our schools at, at particular ages. Uh, hence the drive, a very uh, appropriate drive from the research community towards mass specialists in primary schools. And actually, the very good work which has been done by the government over the last decade in getting more specialist teachers in mathematics into primary schools. So, in essence, the job of a national curriculum is to provide some kind of epistemic map of what's expected at a particular age, to have high expectations but not stress the system so far that it breaks. And what of technology? I mean, Celia Hoyle said, you know, for goodness sake, Tim, you've got to get technology in respect of mathematics into the national curriculum. And I said, no, I don't think we should, actually. And she said, well, that's outrageous. Um, because you're, you're condemning people to a, a Victorian curriculum. I said, no, I don't think so. I think if we list the specific technologies which are being used now 
which will be utterly transformed in five years, then we condemn the national curriculum as being constantly changed, including constant change in those things that shouldn't be changed because we've got them right in terms of, for example, when all four functions in negative numbers should be mastered by young people. No, what we need to do is to, is to put in highly demanding expectations in respect of deep mathematical understanding that can only be well taught through the use of technology. So not specifying the technology, but specifying the deep understanding which is expected. For example, putting it at, a, at a, perhaps an absurdly young age, exploration of the changing variables in relationship to expression of rates, which you can really only do through the use of technology. OK, just, just, just two more comments to finish. Learning should be fun. Of course it should. Really? Um, when, you, when you actually look at videos of, of infants below six months, they don't smile much when they're learning. It's actually not very easy. They're very engaged, and they achieve more at that age than they ever do in later life in terms of the amount of learning they're doing. So actually, students' expectations in relation to mathematics are really important. And we have a generation that increasingly feels that it's legitimate that they should say, why? Why should I learn this? And it's legitimate for them to actually expect fun during the experience of learning. And this is incredibly challenging. What we need is persistence and commitment. And you actually find that in other nations in respect to mathematical learning. And that's what our transnational studies are really showing us, looking at PISA, Pearl's Thames, or the Type 3 analysis of Flemish, Belgium, Singapore, Finland, and so on. So the final point is this, really. We mustn't fool ourselves that the surface behaviors are what we should be about. We should be about deep understanding. But the restrictions around a national curriculum are associated with the fact that we can only specify the surface behaviors. We can only specify what people should do, how much of it they should do, and over what sort of time frame and at what sort of age. And what we know, looking through Singapore and Hong Kong and so on and all their curriculum, is they do a lot more maths. They do a lot more problem solving, and they use a Brunerian, concrete, iconic, abstract, abstract model to drive that learning. And as a result, they, do, they get people to a much more sophisticated mathematical understanding by the age of 11. And that's the kind of challenge which we face in appropriating learning theory and empirical understanding of what is done at particular ages in other, other nations to get the right sort of national curriculum. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Tim.